the reason why the blood pressure is high in the first place. There, it's an artificial chemical to artificially lower the blood pressure, which sometimes is necessary, but the question is why is the blood pressure high in the first place, whether obesity or stress or other factors are going to play in there. So, uh, different types of, of blood pressure medication. Everybody heard of diuretic? So what a diuretic does is it pulls water out of the bloodstream, it dehydrates you, and so normally your kidney is the main organ that's going to pull water out of the bloodstream. Diuretic works on the kidney, pull more water out of the bloodstream. So if we have a, a pipe and there's a certain amount of water or fluid going through this pipe, as we add more water to the pipe, the pressure goes up. If you take less water out of the pipe, the pressure goes down. So by pulling water out of the bloodstream, the blood pressure goes down, which is okay. Um, but the question is, don't we need water in our body? Our body is 70% water. A lot of different organs require water to function, uh, especially if we want energy. Uh, well, we need water to, to, to help our body break down food. So water is actually important. ACE inhibitor, anybody heard of an ACE inhibitor? It's a pretty common one. Uh, an ACE inhibitor basically uh, artificially causes the blood vessels to relax. It inhibits the, the reaction that causes the blood vessels to contract. Um, Theory makes the heart work less hard, but uh, also relaxes blood vessels that shouldn't be relaxed. So we hear, if you ever watch TV and you watch some of the blood pressure medication commercials, you'll see here's some of the side effects and it goes on for a while because we're reducing blood flow to areas where we might not want those things reduced. Um, so the question is, don't we need blood flow? A beta blocker. Um, this one artificially <coughs> prevents adrenaline from turning on and making our heart pump harder and turn, turning up the blood pressure. So uh, anybody been under stress and trying to, maybe something jumps out of you, you get, get a little bit of stress and you're going to run away, your blood pressure needs to go up to pump more blood into the arms and the legs so you can deal with the stressful event. Or if we're at work and, or, or at the gym and we want to exercise, we need to pump more blood into the arms and the legs. Our adrenaline goes up, we have more energy, because more blood is being pumped out there. Um, we don't want to artificially block this because uh, that won't let it go ties and shut. But there's a reason why our body is, is telling our heart and our blood pressure to go up. So. Arterial or atherosclerosis. This is kind of like the corrosion on a pipe and the problem is it weakens the artery, eventually causes damage, and it's going to lead to problems. So uh, plaque build up in one or more of the arteries, the artery wall becomes hard, narrow, weak, and more prone to blockage or rupture. So that's the concern. That's where, that's where this cholesterol thing came in. Because as we dissect arteries that are full of plaque, and we break, break it down and look what's in there, they find that there's cholesterol in there. Uh, all the arteries are affected. We'll see it throughout the body. Uh, the arteries should be nice and flimsy and over time because hard and rigid. And when you put increased pressure on a rigid artery, instead of expanding like a balloon, it just snaps and breaks or ruptures. And so that's where we would get a stroke or an aneurysm. <coughs> and we get worried about the coronary arteries with this atherosclerosis because as they become narrowed, cuts off the blood flow to the heart, and then the heart can start to die. You know what that. So, here's, a, here's an interesting question. Which one of these things increases the cholesterol the most? And the options are saturated fat. Anybody seen this? Sorry. From, yeah, from Saturday Night Live. <coughs> the bears. Uh, cholesterol, which we know the cholesterol is in eggs, or sugar. Which one do you guys think is the one that increases the cholesterol the most? Mm. A, C. B. There's A and B. C. It's actually C. I, I, I see it. It's actually, yeah, it's actually sugar. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> in, uh, in rabbits, if we feed a rabbit saturated fat or cholesterol, uh, if rabbits are known for eating grass, Vegetables. If we feed them cholesterol, their body doesn't have the necessary metabolism and enzymes to break down cholesterol. So as you feed them aerobic cholesterol, their bloodstream is going to clog up with cholesterol and they're going to have tons of heart problems. But if you feed a dog cholesterol or saturated fat, 
they have no problem with it at all. They like it. They like it. They can handle meat because they are designed to eat meat. And you look at the teeth structure of a rabbit, and they have two front teeth that come down like this for, for chopping off vegetables. And you look at the teeth structure of a dog, and they've got two canines on the side for ripping apart teeth, ripping apart meat. And you say, okay, if, if I'm a human and I look at my teeth, do they look more like a dog's teeth, or do I have two teeth in the front that look like a rabbit? And I would say you probably look a little bit more like the dog's teeth with the little incisors on the side for chopping up meat. So humans actually have the ability to break down meat. And a lot of the studies that were done on the cholesterol, they were done on the rabbits, and it, that was where it was originally, originally found that as you feed a rabbit, cholesterol blocks their arteries. And they did the same study later on the dog, and they found out it has no effect. So. If your body's working the way that it's supposed to, you should be able to have cholesterol floating through the bloodstream and not causing any problems. It's, it has a job to do. It's, it's supposed to be in there. But if there is damage to the artery, that's where the cholesterol starts to stick. And so we want to learn what is going to cause damage to the artery, what's going to cause that cholesterol to, to stick there. So the body actually makes most of the cholesterol it needs in a day. It's made in the liver. It makes HDL, it makes LDL, the two different kinds of cholesterol. Um, it's found in animal tissues, it's a component of the cell membranes, so as we eat meat, there's cholesterol in there. Um, our body requires cholesterol. Anybody heard this before, that we actually need cholesterol to function? Yeah, so it's part of our cell membranes. It's, uh, it's used by the body for healing, so in an artery, as we damage the artery, if we nick an artery or we injure an artery, cholesterol is what goes in there and actually repairs the artery. What stops that damage or sticks to the damage and, and heals. Just like if we cut our arm and we get some scar tissue on our arm, we heal that, that scab. Same thing happens on the inside of the, of the arteries. As we damage the artery, the cholesterol sticks there and it's actually part of the healing of the scab that forms. Um, we need large amounts in our brain for brain function. So for the kids, they say up to 50% of the brain uh, is required, requires cholesterol for them. Vital for a proper nerve function, so along the nerves, we need cholesterol for the nerves to work right. Uh, we need a large amounts for you know, skin to protect us from toxic substances. We need it in the liver to help break down fats. And all of our hormones are made out of cholesterol. So when we learn about hormones and hormone problems and burning through hormones, all these hormones are made out of cholesterol. Vitamin D, in order to make our vitamin D, so we're exposed to the sun, our body makes vitamin D, in order to convert sunlight into vitamin D in our body, we need cholesterol, that's what the vitamin D is, is part of it. So we need cholesterol to make vitamin D. We've heard all the new good things coming out about vitamin D. So, very important. So, there's a little bit of controversy over, over some of these medications and, and how important is it for with cholesterol. Bottom line, lots of profits, profits in the billions for selling, for selling medications for cholesterol. So there's, there's, there is an ulterior motive out there, and it's making money. There's a lot of money to be made on cholesterol drugs. Um, one of the top sellers in the, in the world right now. Um, cholesterol lowering <coughs> drugs can damage the body. One of the primary things that these drugs do is they mess with our CoQ10. Has anybody heard the word CoQ10 before? And so normally our body will, will be able to use CoQ10 and manufacture it's made in the liver, broken down in the liver. <coughs> It's what kind of supplies energy to our cells. In the heart, there's twice as much CoQ10 as any other part of the body. So we need the CoQ10 for our heart to function. Well, when we start to take cholesterol medications, it, it can damage our liver's ability to process this CoQ10. And so up until about the age of 25, we really don't need to supplement much with CoQ10 because our body can make and handle CoQ10 just fine. But as we age, between the age of 25 up until 80, our body slowly loses the ability to metabolize and use that CoQ10. So as we age over the age